And good to have you with us here on CTV News Channel. I'm Todd Vander Hayden. Culture shock time today. Stories that are trending, getting buzz, headlines that make you think or make you do a double take, starting with soccer and sex. The World Cup is coming up in Russia this summer, arguably the world's biggest sporting event. But now the Soccer Association in Argentina is in a little bit of hot water after it included a chapter about how to stand a chance with a Russian girl in a manual that it handed over to journalists, Argentinian journalists, who are going to be traveling to Russia to cover the World Cup. The manual recommended that reporters look clean, smell nice, dress well, in order to impress Russian women. That's prompted an outcry on social media. The association has since apologized, but of course we have lots of stories about this over the years, and the Olympics and the World Cup, no exception. Let's bring in our panelists who are standing by. We have got do and Nanda and Samantha Kemp Jackson in Toronto. In Montreal, we've got Kenny Bodanis. Samantha, I'm going to start with you on this one. What do you make of this? Soccer and sex. Well, I'm not surprised that soccer and sex go together, um, but I am surprised at the verbiage that was used in this manual. I know that they said that it was a mistake and it wasn't supposed to be included, but obviously so many people probably vetted uh, the, the manual and thought it was fine. I think it speaks to a larger issue of sexism and misogyny and the fact that they're calling these women girls. I think the whole thing is appalling and I think that I'm glad that they were called out on it. I remember, Kenny, when I was in Sochi covering the Winter Olympics, one of the stories we did was this whole notion of sort of Tinder exploding in the athlete's village because people were hooking up all over the place. Uh, here's another example, and yet in this case it seems to be almost officially sanctioned by the Argentinian Football Association, as it's known as. Yeah, the only thing that surprises me about this is that somebody was actually dumb enough to put it out there where the public could have access it, to it. I've been involved in sports and media almost my whole life, and I can tell you this is exactly what women in particular, but everybody talks about when they talk about locker room talk and misogyny and the way women are viewed in the sporting world. I'll throw this out there. I was a figure skater for 17 years of my life, and still when I bring it up now, I still get comments and snickers. I think as much as we feel we are changing, it is still going to take a general generation or two to dread the swamp of uh, misogyny and prejudice and it's up to parents to start parenting their children differently and I think in North America really we've just learned to be PC about it which hasn't drained down to Argentina. There but we I go. don't think what they're doing there is any different than what we're doing here. We've just learned to hide it quite frankly. Oh, okay. What about you do and what's your read on this story? Yeah, I mean, it says a lot about the Argentinian culture as well, because uh, Buenos Aires, which is the capital, saw the largest women's march ever. And it's because the women there feel uh, that the sexism is so apparent and it's so prevalent. Um, and now I don't, also don't understand why uh, this football association would want their journalists and their players to go to Russia and focus on women like they should be focusing on their jobs. I really don't understand uh, how this mix up or mistake, as they call it, could have happened in the first place. Uh, but I think social media is a great thing because now this culture that has existed for so long is finally feeling the pressure of what it's like when people uh, speak up against it. So uh, they're rectifying what's happened and hopefully we'll never see this happen again in the future. Okay, let's go from soccer and sex over to Pink, big pop star who is now being praised for having what some are calling the perfect response to a user on Twitter who said Pink looked old, so she should be named Purple instead. Wow, the Twitter replied by tweeting, there are a few people left in the world that choose to age naturally, and I've earned every minute of my 38 years. Okay, Kenny, I'll start with you here. What do you think? First, I didn't know purple was in any way older than pink, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, I, I'm usually a huge proponent of ignoring trolls on social media because social media is really just one big attention-getting echo chamber. But I think that pink's response and everybody supporting that could actually do some good and send the right message. And can you just be happy with whoever you are? I also think that trolls, a great um, punishment for trolls would be to have their real names revealed so they can stop, stop hiding behind their handles. Uh, my handle, by the way, is at Kenny Bodanis. <laughs> Anonymity is what gives everybody this feeling of power. Samantha, what do you think about what Pink is saying? And, and I guess the larger message here as well about, you know, growing up, aging in the public spotlight, which is something that a lot of us don't have to worry about, but she and others like her certainly do. 
Well, I think that she is right on the money. And I got to say, I love Pink because she's very real. She's very authentic and she speaks her mind. And she's saying what a lot of us think. I mean, at the end of the day, most of us have to age. Most of us get wrinkly and most of us gain some weight as we get older. We're not going to stay, quote unquote, young and beautiful forever. And she is living in, in an industry or she works within an industry where that's the expectation. But she's always kind of built her career about bucking the trends. And I really uh, appreciate that she has come out and said, listen, this is not the way to be. I know that a few years ago there was something about, you know, her daughter being concerned about how she was being perceived and Pink giving her a really good uh, pep talk. So I completely commend what she's saying. And I think we need to listen to these words that she's she's saying. What do you think, doing? Yeah, you know, being in the music industry, being in an industry, like you said, which is in the spotlight and you're constantly being watched, there is a lot of pressure. I was surprised that she called out this person uh, saying that I, you must be from L.A. because L.A. is known to be that place where everybody's super concerned about their looks and uh, all the Botox and the fillers, and that's where you see it. So uh, given that most of the industry, the music industry in Hollywood is in L.A., I was quite surprised that she called them out on it. Uh, but I think, you know, kudos to her as usual. She's really sticking up and voicing what needs to be said. And just earlier, earlier this year, she called out the boss of the Grammys because he said that women in music need to step up. And when she made the first move and called him out, a lot of celebrities jumped on the bandwagon and the same thing is happening now. So I think she's really good at starting these conversations that need to take place. All right, let's go from Pink over to Twitter and Tinder and the latest from the folks at Tinder. This is a very popular, as we all know, dating service online. And a lot of people use it to swipe left or swipe right and meet possibly the love of their life or the love of right now. Now, as the case may be, they have got a new feature, though. They say it's coming out, and it helps to track your location via the Tinder app so that potential matches will know where you have been. Tinder has removed places like doctors' offices and dentists and banks and the place you live or work, but some people say it's still a little bit creepy as well. Dylan, I'm going to start with you on this one. What do you think? Tracking you on Tinder. It's not a little bit creepy, it's extremely creepy. I don't see why anybody that I've matched with on an app like this needs to see what I'm doing, where I'm getting my morning coffee, where I'm taking my dog for a walk. Like, this is not information that needs to be shared. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, a connection is about shared web values, and it's not really about, oh, where do you go during the day? It's So I really don't understand. I mean, apps... Uh, have existed that have used this this feature before. There was an app named Happen, which is the same kind of missed connection app, where if you've encountered somebody during the day, if you've crossed paths with them and you both have the app, you'll be able to see them at the end of the day and hopefully start a conversation. But even that app doesn't tell you exactly where they've been. They just tell you that, oh, these are the people that you crossed a path with. So to show people exact locations on a map doesn't make any sense to me. And now that this has leaked and social media is kind of uh, not really feeling it too much, I think Tinder is going to make the uh, necessary changes and uh, and update what's going to go, what's going to happen. There we go. Well, I know Kenny Bodanis is at my old stomping ground at 1205 Papineau in Montreal. So I know where you are. <laughs> and I don't, need, I don't need Tinder <laughs> to tell me that you are there. But what do you think about this? Is it creepy? Is it cool? Is it the way things are going? Well, of course, it's uber creepy. And I even think that it should be illegal to not have people opt in to use a service like this. Um, that said, it's built on the shoulders of a culture we have now where people have to check in online when they're at a restaurant or check in online when they're at a vacation. And society in and of itself is saying, look, this is where I am and look at me and look at what I'm doing. I mean, if you use any online payment, Interact or Apple Pay, your bank already knows when you go to the doctor, what prescriptions you're on, what specialists you see, what junk food you're eating, and people want to share. That being said, yeah, this is pretty gross, and I mean, they'll just find me doing my laundry in my basement for two hours and mowing my lawn this weekend, but turn <laughs> off your GPS and stop checking in. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, last word goes to you, Samantha. What do you think? I think this is super creepy. I agree with both of the panelists here. I mean, we're, we're tracked already, as Kenny said. We're tracked everywhere we go. And we kind of know that. We know that when we use our debit card or we pay with our credit card or we even turn on our phone in the location services, that people know where we are. We really need to be tracked by people that we probably don't know very well, if at all. And we're, we're, we're wanting to just have a relationship with them on a short-term basis or we want to get to know them, but we now know that they're going to be following everything we do. This is this is a recipe for disaster. People can stalk people anonymously. You can make a fake profile. You can follow people around uh, the internet and on your phone. I think it's a bad idea, and I'm really surprised that Tinder did this. Our culture shockers today, Samantha, Dewan, and Kenny, shocking their way through our cultural topics. Great to have the three of you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Todd. <laughs> Thanks, Todd.